Stravinsky, the little mole, lived in the land of Ram, a part of the vast territory ruled by the great Elohim. He attended the small forest school of Eagle Owl Nicodemus in Owlywood, where young children learned everything they needed to know for life. One day on a walk after school, Stravinsky and his three friends, Harold the Hedgehog, Klopstock the Tortoise and Elbow the Blue Rabbit discovered a small wood in the middle of the large meadow leading to the Valley of Elves. Come on, let's go that way. Klopstock the Tortoise shuffled his way eagerly towards the forest and the others followed him full of curiosity. Cautiously, the four friends crept through the tall grass. Look there! Hidden amongst tall trees and in the middle of an overgrown garden stood an old dilapidated mansion. With wide eyes, the four friends stared at the strange building. That's spooky. Shall we go in? Better not. It might be enchanted. Chicken? I'm not a chicken. I'm a rabbit. Well, I think we should go inside. Me too. I want to find out what's in there. Listen. Listen. I can hear someone playing music. Wow! Come on, let's find out who's inside. Curiously, the four squeezed through the half-open gate and tiptoed past large plants and leaves towards the porch of the mysterious house. Hey, hey, wait for me! Shush, be qu Ouch! What's wrong now? I fell over. Over a little molehill? There's something buried. Let's have a look. Help me out, Harold. Within a short time, the hedgehog and mole had uncovered the buried item. It was a little bag of... Gold! Hooray! We're rich! Wait! First we have to find out who this gold belongs to. I'm sure that whoever buried it here didn't want it anymore. You don't believe that, do you? Come now, let's go inside the house. Harold was the first to climb the stairs towards the front door, and the others followed behind. While Harold secretly hoped to meet an elf inside the house, Elbow was scared of being attacked by a monster or wild beast. The front door was open, allowing the four friends to make their way into the sitting room of the mysterious house. The furniture was dusty and it smelled of freshly brewed tea. Someone's making tea! It's all quiet again! Spooky. Come, let's look for some books. There aren't any here. Maybe there are some in the basement. What's with you and the books? I'd rather go and find the kitchen. No, let's go to the basement. And be quiet. I wonder who lives here. Maybe the big bad wolf. Very funny, Klopstock. Very funny. It's good you're a little blue bunny and not little red riding hood. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just be quiet now. Finally, they found the steep staircase that led to the basement and climbed down the wooden steps. The books are near. I can already smell them. And there they were. In a massive basement that looked like a huge library, there were a vast number of books, manuscripts, volumes, encyclopedias and maps lying on a multitude of shelves, tables and armchairs. Wow! There's millions of books there! Readers 
Oh, the books are singing and dancing! Readers and me come very smart Understanding we will impart Knowledge, wisdom and intellect From what you can all expect Come and read us, 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 read us Come and read us, 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 read us Fascinating. Uh, I really think we should leave now. Me too. Did you say something, Klopstock? No. I did. Galbert Bibberkrow. I am a troll, as you can see. Taken by surprise, the four friends turned to face the troll, who stood in the doorway looking very annoyed. Um, hello, Mr. Troll. My name is Stravinsky. These are my friends, Harold, Klopstock and Elbow. What are you doing in my house? This is your house. Well, I do live here, don't I? Did you play the music? Music? Hogwash. I don't play music. I don't play at all. Trolls don't play anything. Only bagpipe or doodle bag or pipe doodle or bag doodle pipe. But who was playing the music? Don't know. Know nothing. Don't really know anything. Please tell us, dear troll, what kind of house is this anyway? You don't know that? You don't know that, not at all? I will tell you. I will tell you right away. Without delay. At once and immediately. Don't you know this loathsome place? The house that legend does embrace The home where hearsay spins its yarn And shapes our way of life Yes, the mysterious has revealed Boundless is the magic here concealed Secrets locked away from the light The mysterious, oh so serious house of fright The house in which the darkness reigns And, and evil, evil thoughts it cultivates Dark arts you'll learn, expand all your mind By the powers you will find Yes, the mysterious house revealed Boundless is the magic here concealed Yes, its secrets are for the wise The mysterious and delirious house of lies Yes, the mysterious house revealed Boundless is the magic here concealed Yes, its secrets are for the wise The mysterious, oh so serious house of lies The mysterious, quite vagnerious house of lies Oh dear, quick, let's get out of here No, no, I want to stay and browse through all the amazing books here me too. Yes, yes, amazing books, magical books, goblin and pixie books, read, read, read. <laughs> oh, so Bibberquell, is this your gold bag? Gold bag? Gold sack? Yes, mine. Not a good hidey hole, the garden, dear, oh dear. A bad spot, the garden. Oh, I've tried to bury. I've received this gold from Her Majesty, the Scarlet Queen. I was told to multiply, but I can't do it. When the Scarlet Queen returns and I won't have no money or gold, then she'll beat me. Oh, a pound of gold, a gold pound. I have to go and hide it or she'll find me and beat me. Oh, dear. I'm sure the Queen would never do that to you. I know her. She's very kind. Hey, Sir Troll, please don't run away. There he goes. He's weird, definitely. Listen, I can hear the music again. Come, let's go and find it. No, I want to stay here. You can go, Stravinsky. Then you can tell us all about it. We will stay here. Okay, but don't do anything stupid. Full of curiosity, Stravinsky climbed up the stairs and followed the music. Hmm, now the music has stopped again. But it came from upstairs. Stravinsky carried on to the first floor and carefully peeked into each room. Thick dust had settled on most of the furniture, and spiders had spun cobwebs in every available corner. Each room was nicely decorated, but not a soul was to be seen. In a small dining room that smelled of freshly brewed tea, an old cello was leaning against a sofa. Well, finally! Excuse me, my dear cello, but could you tell me who was playing the music on you just now? Myself! I am so lonely. 
Once in a while, I long for the sound of my favorite melodies, so I play them myself, as no one else will use me. Gently, the bow touch. Oh, don't step on it! It's very sensitive. Horse hair, you understand. Gently, the bow touches my strings, and my wooden cello heart is warmed by the music. Yes. But who made the tea? Did you do that? Oh, dearie, no! Have you ever seen a cello that drinks tea? No, no. That was the troll. He's been staying here for a few months now. He was looking for a hiding place from the Scarlet Queen, and now lives here and occasionally comes upstairs to drink tea with me and the Glob Glow Gab Galab. With who? With the Glob Glow Gab Galab. With the Glob Glow Gab Galab. But who is that? The Glob Glow Gab Galab. He's very big and looks like a big lump of dough. He can change into any shape or form that. Oh! <laughs> so... oh, what was that? My friends, I need to find them. What a short visit! How sad. He rushed down the stairs and hurried back to the basement. His friends were gone. Help! What's that? From one of the thick books, the Glob Glow Gab Galab slowly emerged. His massive body was like a large lump of dough that was fed by the thoughts and stories of the books. The ideas and sentences of the books were his nourishment. Slowly, his flabby, overweight body oozed from the book onto the basement floor. <sighs> Before long, the Glob Glow Gab Galab caught sight of another book and manoeuvred himself in its direction until his massive body sat right on top of it. And just as his fat body had fully covered the book, the Glob Glow Gab Galab became smaller and smaller until he was sucked into the book with the sound that gave him his name. Glob Glow Glab Galab. Once inside, Stravinsky could hear the Glob Glow Gab Galab giggle and gobble. After some time, the book opened again, and the Glob Glow Gab Galab wriggled his way out of the book and dropped onto the floor. <laughs> oh, a guest! Hello, hello, young man. With whom do I have the unspeakable pleasure of meeting? Stravinsky. My name is Stravinsky, and I am a little mole. Delightful. Really delightful. I'm the Glob Glow Gab Gala. I love books, and this basement is a true treasure trove. I am the Glob Glow Gab Gala, the Schwabble Dabble Wabble Gabble Flibber Blabber Blab. I'm full of Schwibble Glibber kind. I am the yeast of thoughts and minds. Schwabble Dabble Glibber Glabber Schwibble Schwab Glab. Dibble double shribble shabble glibber glab swap. Schwabble double glibber glabber shribble swap dab. Dibble double shribble shabble glibber swap glab. Oh, ha ha ha. Mmm, splendid. Simply delicious. Oh, mmm, ha ha ha. I am the glob glow gab galab. The schwabble double wabble gabble flibber blabber blab. I'm full of schwibble glibber kind. I am the yeast of thoughts and mind. Schwabble double glibber glabber schwibble trap glab. Dibble double schwibble schwabble glibber glab schwab. Schwabble double glibber glabber schwibble trap dab. Dibble double schwibble schwabble glibber schwab glab. But is it not really dangerous to eat all those books? Uh, may I correct you, my friend? I do not eat books. I consume their thoughts. I feed on them, but I do leave the books just as they are. So you read them? Uh, Flobberlove, but I do not read, my dear Stravinsky. Vinsky? Yes, 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 I know. But no, I don't read. I consume their thoughts. I live off them. Do you understand? That's more than reading. It's fantasy, understanding, dreaming. Oh, it feeds me. Just like yeast works its way through the dough to pass on its flavor, so I am nourished by the thoughts of these books. 
Yes. But not every book is good for your health. Certainly not. But I'm not picky. I take whatever I can find. But please tell me, young friend, what are you doing here? I'm looking for my friends. I just heard them shouting for help, and, and now they're not here anymore. They were in this room. Well, I haven't seen anybody. We need to search for them. Maybe somebody has kidnapped them. The Rat King, or the Troll, or somebody else. You're not serious, are you? You think the Rat King? It seems to me he's enchanted this house. Twaddle waddle, my dear Strawinsky. Stravinsky. Yes, 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 I know. But the Rat King, after all, I mean, he doesn't exist for real, does he? Of course he exists. He wants to destroy everyone. But there they are. Frozen stiff, the three friends sat huddled in a corner, everyone staring at a book and unable to move. They didn't respond when Stravinsky pushed them and shouted in their ears. Hey you! Wake up! They were trapped. What else can I do? Only the Scarlet Queen can help now. The Scarlet Queen? <gasps> of all things, why the Scarlet Queen? Do we have to? Please! Well, and what now? They can't hear me. The books seem to have put them under a spell. It's just so important to be careful what you read. But something like that has never happened to me. I can transform into any shape or form I like. Into everything I read or fill my mind with. Look, I'll show you. The Glob-Glow Gab Galab wanted to cheer up Stravinsky and change the shape into a large eagle. You see? It's that easy. And I can grow or shrink to any size and even combine anything I've read. Now watch this. And the Glob Glow Gab Galab transformed into a pink elephant with eagle wings that was the size of a large dog. Well, great, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so sorry about my pronunciation, but I still have to get used to this trunk. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, 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 I'm so sorry. This is really embarrassing. Just a moment, please. With some additional effort, the Globlo Gab Galab eventually managed to regain his original shape. He then pulled his massive body through the gaping hole that his elephant body had torn in the ceiling. Stravinsky managed to grab the Globlo Gabgalab's tail and was pulled into the living room. I see. You're also affected by the books. Yeah, from time to time, I... Uh... You really should be careful with what you fill yourself with. Otherwise, you might explode one day. Well, I... Uh... She's coming! She's coming! We're lost! She's coming! A breathless and highly agitated Gulbert Bibberkrowl came running into the mansion. Who's coming? You're quite beside yourself, my friend. By and large, I am quite beside myself. Whoa! What's that? The flooring, the beautiful floorboards, the expensive, valuable flooring. I can't believe it. I really can't believe it. That must be you. That must have been you! That must have been you again! That globgy, globgy thingy! Glob, glob, gap, glob. This is now the second time! The second time in two weeks! The second time in two weeks that something like this has happened! Last week he turned into a dragon and nearly burned down the house! Outrageous! Simply outrageous! I'm very sorry. The dragon had a cold and um, had to sneeze. Does that happen to you very often? Occasionally, when I'm not careful. Ha! Huh? When he's not careful? When he's not careful? When he overeats? Overeat? You just have to be careful with what you consume. But Mr. Troll, please tell us what terrible thing you have seen. Who's coming? Who's coming? Ah! Ah! 
Ah, oh, yes, the Scarlet Queen is coming. Somebody must have called her. Who did that? She will kill us. Ah, if the Scarlet Queen comes, then we're all doomed. But why do you think that? The Scarlet Queen is generally acting on behalf of the Great Elohim, isn't she? And the Great Elohim told me through her that I need to make a decision about whom I want to serve. Him or the Rat King. Well, but I don't want to serve anyone. I only want my books. That's why I've been hiding here. I've been here for two weeks now. And I was supposed to multiply the gold, but I didn't do it. I just hid it. Now it's all over. <laughs> Nothing is over. The Scarlet Queen is very kind. If you trust her and tell her everything that is on your heart, then she will help you. She will go to the great Elohim, and he will forgive you. Are, Are you, you sure? sure? But of course I am. That's why I've asked her to come here. She is patient and very kind. Grants you Thank you, Stravinsky. That was very kind of you. Your Majesty, you're here. You've called me, and here I am. Oh, and here is my old cello. Aha, uh -huh, hello. That's your cello, Your Majesty? It once belonged to me, and I played on it the most beautiful melodies I know. But one day the cello didn't want me anymore. The Rat King had convinced it that it would be so much better to make music by itself and do its own thing. It could then be its own master and play whatever music it wanted. And now it's so lonely. But what can I do for you, Stravinsky? My friends are downstairs in the basement. They're like statues and don't move at all. They're like frozen. Could you please help them? Let's go and see. Stravinsky and the Scarlet Queen went down to the dusty basement library. Harold, Klopstock and Elbow were still at the same place where Stravinsky had initially found them. Oh, how sad! They really should have been more careful with these. They're too deeply immersed in these books. It wouldn't have taken much longer and they would have turned into Gloglo Gabgalabs. But what's wrong with them? There are books that can captivate you that even come directly from the Rat King and can enchant you if you're not careful. In the same way, there are some things in this world from which you'll be unable to free yourself. The Glob Glob Gab Galab used to be a beautiful forest elf lovingly created by the great Elohim. But he decided to make his own way and in doing so ended up discovering some magic books. He lost his slender form and became what he is now. Big and fat and slow. How awful. It is. Now, let's see what we can do. The Scarlet Queen began to lovingly stroke each of the three friends for a long time. Harold's spikes caused her hand to bleed, but she didn't seem to mind, even though one could see that she was in pain. Once the three friends began to regain consciousness, the Scarlet Queen asked them, do you want to be free? The three nodded. Immediately the Queen struck each of the three books with her open palm, causing them to crumble into pieces. Out of the dust, three large rats emerged, and with ear-splitting screams and shrieks took flight. <laughs> Who could have imagined that? Now then, you two, do you understand what kind of house you're living in? Oh, well... Uh... Many thanks, Lady Queen. You have saved us. Thank you. That was very... Stravinsky. Look there, inside the wardrobe. The Rat King. Oh. That's just unfair. You always interfere with my plans. But just you wait. Sooner or later, I will defeat Great Elohim and crush you all. 
Just you wait. Yes, I am the king of the rat folk. I'm the greatest force of all. Build the realm in light with my dark cloak. Bring despair and make you fall. Tremble in fear, my child. Follow me into everlasting night. I am your fiercest foe. Oh, how frightful, terrifying is the Rat King's evil might. For no soul ever resists me, and my regime is fierce and grim. I will spread my kingdom of terror and destroy great Elohim. Tremble and fear, my child. Follow me into everlasting night. I am your fiercest foe. Oh, how frightful, terrifying is the Rat King's evil might. Whimpering and whining out of fear and anger, the Rat King disappeared. It was very kind of you to help us. Please be more careful in future. No one needs to be afraid of me. The Rat King is not something to be taken lightly. You need to decide, he or the Great Elohim. Please trust the Great Elohim. Don't be like my old cello. I don't want to be lonely. Please forgive my disobedience, Your Majesty, most wonderful Queen. Gulbert Bibberkral stood aside and muttered to himself. And I, and I, Gulbert Bibberkral, how should I decide? How can I decide? Oh, I'm sure she knows that I haven't multiplied the gold and she'll punish me. On the other hand, if I don't decide to serve her and return to her, then I won't receive a place at the king's castle one day. But that's where I want to go. That's where I've always wanted to go. Gulbert Bibberkral continued to ponder and was very troubled. In the meantime, everybody said their goodbyes. And then they left the mysterious house, as it was likely that the Rat King would return to take his revenge. So they all went their ways. Gulbert Bibberkral, however, sneaked away through the back door. The four friends watched the Scarlet Queen float like a red cloud towards the horizon. In her hands she held the old cello that was full of remorse and had returned to its master. And in her flight the Scarlet Queen played her most beautiful melodies to the great Elohim. How good that everything worked out well in the end. It could have all turned out much worse. It is very good that we know the Scarlet Queen. Without her, we would have been in great trouble. Stravinsky nodded. And when he was lying in his bed in the evening and considered everything that had happened during that day, he decided that from this day onwards, he would live his life entirely for the glory of the great Elohim. Then he would be protected from the evil schemes of the Rat King. <laughs>